All right, we'll open the meeting at 6.09 p.m. Um, do we have a quorum? You do, Michael's on screen. Okay. Just make sure you go in for votes. Yes, okay. Um, review and approved minutes from September 14th, 2023. Any comments or can I have a motion to accept? I'll make a motion to accept. Okay. I'll second it. All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. And it's and on to financial statements. Okay, a couple of things. Uh, let's get the warrants on records first, and then I'll talk about 24. I'm going to talk a little bit about 25 as well as we're starting to look ahead to budget season. So uh, 16 warrants were signed, totaling $95,848.06. Those were signed electronically since the last meeting. Uh, I did send you out the expense reports. I wanted to just touch on a couple of lines to give you some updates on a few things. Overall, there's no concerns about not meeting the budget, but we definitely have some overages that are true overages at this point that will have to move funds from another line. So again, not concerned about it, but just want to give you a little bits of explanation. So there's some things in the business office. Um, some of our accounting staff, the wages are a little bit higher than we budgeted. Uh, our software fees increased because we upgraded the system last year. Um, what did I make a note about here? Um, the teacher lines uh, cumulatively are over by like $2,500. That is actual overage there. Uh, OT, same thing. I think the occupational therapy line will work itself out because we have somebody on an LOA. So currently there's the sub salaries in there and the teacher salaries. So I think that that'll work out fine in the wash in the end. Um, summer school stipends, that's on page three of the report. We did go over for summer staffing this year. So that's a $5,000 overage. So if you look at all the little lines, they probably add up to about $10,000. Again, not worried about it. The unfortunate part is that it means at the end of the year when we do all of that, you know, free cash spending, they'll be less available. Yeah. Um, but things between now and then could change. Uh, the other thing to note is the building's general repairs line is over on this report. We're working on fixing that. We are using um, ESSER funds to help offset this year's budget. If you remember from last year, we had about $20,000. The town asked us to reduce the budget to get us below the 3%. Originally, we had planned to pay a salary from ESSER, but in order to save the 9% teacher retirement fee, we're going to pay buildings maintenance fees off of that. So um, that line, I just have to have them change. They're not used to going to a grant to pay buildings general repairs. So POs were put in the wrong line. So I'm going to fix that up. Um, so that's not a problem. The other thing I wanted to bring your attention for 24 is that transportation for special education is up. It's up district wide. Uh, in this case for Conway, in talking with the special education director, we should see back dollar for dollar reimbursement because the student uh, that we're adding a route for, modifying a route for is a school choice student. So in that case, we can submit for 100% reimbursement for transportation. Um, so if you look on the choice report, the transportation line, I did increase um, pretty significantly right now based on what we think the route is going to be at about 60,000. So that may change between now and the end of the year. But again, if that ends up being the true number, we'll see that money back through school choice. So not a major concern, just making you aware because it is a big increase mm -hmm. there. Um, <coughs> Did funding go for transportation overall? We still wasn't that something that so the elementary school doesn't get reimbursement from the state, yeah. just the regional school. And it is funded, it's supposed to be this year at 90%, yeah. which is higher than it's yeah. been. Okay. And but others have to increase that. Any other questions about those reports before I talk about 25? Mm -hmm. Michael? 25. Oh my I God. know. Wow. So we're looking ahead already um, to, to try to start some planning preliminarily. First thing that we always look at is what is our contractual obligation. So any teacher changes um, that are coming up with the COLA increase, the step, uh, if anyone has column movement, meaning they've advanced their degree, if they're 
currently at master's and they've obtained additional credits and they're going to move columns. Uh, so Conway's not seeing any uh, column movement next year, which is positive because that has a big shift in the percentage. So COLA plus a step is usually a little over five. And if someone's moving columns, it could be anywhere from seven to eight percent. So it's positive that we're not going to see that. Uh, the hard part for Conway next year is going to be that we have five requests for longevity payments based on the contract commitment. So when a teacher has worked at least 15 years, they can put in for longevity payments, and those payments are 4000 for three years at five teachers. That's $20,000, which is 1% of our budget. So it's a significant increase uh, for a really small district. Um, we There is a clause in the contract that said, says that if there are budget problems, we can request um, that teachers waive their right and move it to another year. So instead of taking their first year of longevity this year, they could take their longevity next year and the following two years after. I don't actually see that as solving the problem. It's really just pushing it down the road. So I don't believe we're going to go there. Uh, we may have to be creative in how we fund that. Uh, the other thing to think about with that many folks at over 15 years, and actually some of these people are surpassed the 15 year mark if they just you know, didn't put in for it yet, that means that we probably have some retirements coming up in the next three to five years or so. Um, Hopefully not three at one. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, we do not have any retirements to pay out next year. That's a positive thing. This mm -hmm. year we had one. A um, couple years back we had many. Okay. So we could be seeing that coming up in the next few years. For longevity, we'll throw that in the budget as a first look to see what it does to the numbers on top of the COLA and the step increases and all of the other inflation that we account for. Uh, but we may have to look at using rural aid. Uh, the Conway does have some ESSER funds available that we can use through September of next year. So we might have to get creative on how we cover it for year one Great. and then look at it in the future. You might want to put it in the budget as well because you're going to do three years worth and then you know you're going to get a retirement. Yeah. From one of those four, yeah. at least. Mm -hmm. You usually put it in your last, you know, your last four years because it goes toward your total, uh, your total amount toward retirement. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, just about everybody does their last three years, unless life circumstances change and then they whatever. So there is a possibility that all four are going out at once. Five. Five, rather. Thank you. <laughs> going um, going I do think that's a good idea. I think that's what we tried to do last year was add in that retirement line because of our five schools, this is one of the few that doesn't have that in the budget. Um, it's a smaller teacher pool, so it's not used regularly. So there's pros and cons to it. You know, we can do this later on. We can, yeah. Um, I think our challenge is going to be that from what we're hearing, the town is in a difficult spot financially. It is if we don't get any assistance. I felt like dual action today that I should talk about <laughs> funding for Conway while I was there talking about funding for mental health clinics. Yeah. I think they see us as we don't need it, but people were they, financially. Uh, yeah, they. Um, the roads themselves were like $30 million. Deerfield's going as a special town meeting on next Monday. They're trying to get a $5 million bond to pay for theirs. So they don't think they're getting the money. So I don't think dear book, I don't think well, they're Conway's giving all of that town in the east that got wiped out. Mm -hmm. we'll call them. Yeah. So I'm just saying like that's not because it's not the town to trying to take loans out to pay the board. But you're right, we may have to be able to move though. We may have to come in very close to the level. Right. I think we're gonna have to do our right. best this year. I mean that's or we um been use us here and we'll talk about it, we'll get the numbers in front of us, but we do have some some S here and we have some oral aid. Rural aid numbers came out today, by the way. We've been saying that they, they haven't come out yet. So Conway's receiving 26000 in rural aid, um, which is a little bit less than what they you estimated. 30, you thought you were going to be 32, I think. Yeah. 30, forget, whatever number is, it's down about a couple thousand, couple thousand each school. But it's more than last. This current year, we're only receiving 14000 So we're headed in the right direction. Um, so that's a positive thing. And it will help take care of you know, mm -hmm. We pick and choose what pot we're paying, what yeah. right? But yeah. let's see what all the pots are during budget season. All right. So there's a lot more to talk about. I just wanted to put it on the radar because it is a pretty significant circumstance where it mm -hmm. does have a big impact on the budget. So yeah, definitely. Seems to make sense to have it in the budget, not 
and then do stuff right. later that we have, right. but especially right. anticipating that they're going to all be on the same timeline. Right. I mean, we have the one grace year with ESSER, though, this year, so we can help the town by using ESSER on right. the town budget if that's for the town. You know, yeah. that's what but I think it's patient this time. Right now, we're trying to our game plan here is to give you information along the way, so it doesn't just become a January meeting. You're like, and there's a what, and there's a what. It's just kind of like, okay, right. you can start seeing the different puzzle pieces before we put it together. Definitely. Any questions for Shelley? No, thanks, Shelley. Mm -hmm. Uh, and Kristen sent us a principal's report. Mm -hmm. Okay, Monty. Well, I always like to give you the data update. Um, so just um, so you know, um, with our NWEA, um, we have 59% math on or above grade level. Um, so we were hoping that number was higher, so we really are going to jump in and. Um, you know, look at exactly what's going on. The third grade, it's their first. So you always look at the story. It's their first ever test on, on a computer. Mm -hmm. And so um, we certainly will take that into account as well as other things. Um, but we thought that's so young, isn't it? It's, I mean, it's, I know it isn't, yeah. but it seems so young. Yeah, 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 yeah. 82% um, scored at or above level in the LA, which was great. Um, and now we're going to be looking at, we have an instructional leadership team, grade level meetings that we're going to be looking at um, our formal and informal assessments and specific subgroups. So we look at attendance, we look at students who are requiring behavioral support, students who see the school psychologist, students who are um, often seeing the school nurse, uh, students on individualized education plans or 504 plans, students and family income to see where we might see some subgroups falling or in the past many years, we've had um, where our subgroups of students on IEPs for 504 and low income uh, categories were actually performing at the same level as, um, we, I hate using the word typical, but what a child without any of those um, challenges have. So that, that's been great. I think we've seen a dip um, we're seeing a dip this year, so we're going to really look closely at that. We did pick up quite a few new students who, you know, even in fourth, fifth, and sixth grade, they might not have ever done any. Anyway. So there, there's a lot, but we certainly put a lot of thinking into it. And we're doing a lot of benchmarking, which is great. So we have a math benchmark, an reality benchmark, so that we can mm -hmm. see along the way. Um, new curriculum, the teachers have just been doing a great, great job taking that new curriculum, ELA. Um, you know, reading, writing, and, and some dipping um, deeply into the math. So uh, I think we might see a little lull here. And then I think we're going to, what we're seeing is really good stuff, but I think it's going to take, um, you know, two years to really, mm -hmm. even though we're still doing well, still proud of everything that everyone's doing. Their visit with Jennifer Lee, I don't know if anyone saw that in the Greenfield Recorder, that was fabulous, working on our next visitors. Visitor, we're going to continue with Monty's March this year. Monty will be coming at the end of that October to speak. The students really, really love uh, Monty's March. I want to just update you on a new special education. Um, uh, I'm such a, I'm not lost for words today. New addition to the educational the IEP meeting and protocol, which is, which I love. We're trying to work this all out, but hearing more of the student voice. Mm -hmm. So inviting elementary students to meetings or our, so we had one case where an elementary school student came to a meeting, it was wonderful. So what's working for you, Elaine? What's not working mm -hmm. for you? What could be more helpful? Mm -hmm. The student wasn't shy, they felt comfortable. There was another student who was a little more shy, didn't want to attend, but our special ed teacher did an interview with the student and brought that information to the meeting. I think this is really very exciting. Yep. Um, and so, we're all trying to figure that out because that's very different. Usually in an IEP meeting, you certainly start with the strength, but you're looking at areas of weakness. You're looking at areas of discrepancy. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, we always start with the positives, but when you evaluate a child, that's what you're looking for. You're looking for gaps. You're looking for mm -hmm. where they're scoring lower. 
So we, we have to be very careful if the child stays for the whole IEP meeting versus just the beginning mm -hmm. that we're, we always do it in a positive way, but you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. if we're really looking at deficits. Right. And so rather than coming from a deficit model, we have to figure out how, how we're going to do that. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's pretty exciting. That's um, cool. Yeah. I think I think this is great, Kristen, because I, I worked as a special education liaison for eight years. And, you know, at the middle and high school level, you have these transition meetings and you're interviewing students based on like what their interests are, career things that they might want to participate in. And honestly, like sixth graders, fifth graders, they they have all these same thoughts, too. So being able to add student voice into these individualized plans is awesome. I'm really excited. Yeah, and this is, as I'm sure you know, Michael, this is being pushed out through, um, you know, DESE and special education. So the, you know, our whole district is hopping on board. I know our special ed teachers went to a workshop and they conversed with other special ed teachers in the district and they're all sort of wrapping their, you know, it's new, it's a change, but yeah, I agree with you. Um, you know, the student who came to the meeting, he gave us really good information. Mm -hmm. It was it was really great, you know. Um, and then they have a lot more to say if you give them a chance to say it. Yeah, what's working for you? What's, yeah. You know, um, and then um, we had fire prevention week in, in a fire drill this week. So Chief Baker comes. He's, it's great. He comes with, he does this every year. He comes with the two bears and he buys all the sort of paraphernalia that little kids love. You know, they're on the buses with their, I see you. <laughs> I see you and the eyes pop out and things like that. But Chief Baker has a ball with the kids. And, you know, he goes over some various serious things um, in terms of fire prevention, but he does it in a nice way. Um, well, and the house burnt to the ground this week. Yeah, way, so. yeah, yeah. Just over the weekend, Saturday, yeah. right? Two hours down. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Setting off some fireworks at your house, where? One of those lanterns, pulling lanterns. <laughs> We've done two fire drills so far this year, and um, this past one, the students were all out of the building in place within three minutes. So, oh, great. That's impressive. Quiet and in place. I can't get adults to do that. I know. It's really great. <laughs> what? We're supposed to leave the building? <laughs> Door. I was at a hotel this weekend, Saturday night, midnight, fire alarm. I'm like, oh, I'm not moving. It keeps going, going. I had to go outside for about an hour. It was awful. <laughs> that happened with the, when we got to Paris in May. We had, like, you know, traveled, not slept overnight, arrived, got in, and, like, we got to, like, lay down for an hour, right? As soon as we get flat, the fire alarm goes off. We don't even know, like, where are we? What are we doing? <laughs> Oh my God! So it said, if your light so is flashing, you have to evacuate. If your light is flashing, said to my husband, "There's no lights flashing in the room." I open the door, and there's lights <laughs> flashing all through the hallway. Of course, it was happening. It was asleep, not happening. Right? Yeah. It happens to us once at one of those water parks. Oh, like, boy. <laughs> exhausted from water parks all day, uh, and it was in like. February vacation or something. So we're on the way out of the room and I'm like, get the car keys, you know? Thank God we were kicked out for two hours. People wow. are standing in like their PJs and slippers and freezing cold. It was a gas leak. Oh, but we were warm in our big vehicle. <laughs> like, wow. I'm always exiting with the keys now. <laughs> I also want to give a huge kudos to our special ed teachers for um, helping to roll this out. I mean, they're just fantastic and they you know I, I, this is all them making this work and, and happening and i'm thrilled yeah it's awesome it's great um and i'm excited to hear monty's coming one more time um I'm, yeah. i don't know if you've if, if you've heard his uh podcast the fabulous 413 on nepr npm yeah. but um he's uh he's just doing amazing work and uh so the fact that comma grammar school gets to be a part of that is is awesome yeah, we're so excited. Yeah, that's great. Awesome. Any other questions for Kristen? Thank you, Kristen. Thanks for the great work. Um, all righty. Public comments? No public comment. Okay. Um, unfinished business, all of an equity audit presentation of 928. 
Um, so that was on there because officially we, um, well, you guys got a quorum after we started. Officially, we never opened any meeting to business on that evening, and we just had a presentation. And so technically, there's no minutes to that meeting. And so in the, I, read, I wrote to the chairs, it's just let them know that technically the meeting didn't exist. People, I wondered about that because usually we open for union 38 we didn't have a quorum we didn't have a quorum of majority of school committees oh, for 38 so those multiple rules yeah. quorum rules that weren't, weren't available and obviously the president was from out of town so we couldn't say hey come back another night oh, we yeah. have 48 hours to post um so we did a we listened to the presentation it was recorded and by putting this here it gets in the minutes that um the school committee attended a presentation of such so I love the data. It was very interesting, and he certainly was very comprehensive in the stuff he's rolling out and gave the system a lot of kudos for being on this. So yep. that, that was all good. So you guys should watch the video if you haven't. So definitely. I was, I was there on the, on the Zoom watching it when they were presenting. So. Uh, excellent. Excellent. Also, yeah. <clears throat> well, all righty. New business. Appoint official delegate for MASC. Is um, anybody going to the conference? I bet that's going to be me. I'm going. You're going? Uh, yeah, I have a motion to appoint. <laughs> Thank you. A second? A second. All right. All in favor? All, all right. right. Nobody else is going. It's fun. I I want to go, Elaine. It's it's just like with the three little kids, and yeah. uh, to be gone that many days. I looked at the, I went through the uh, PDF of the workshops happening Wednesday and Thursday, and there are so many that I would go to. It's it's really a tremendous offering. But yeah, last year the keynote was really good too about mental health and uh, standardized testing in schools. Mm -hmm. It was really good. So usually the keynotes are worthwhile so alrighty well, I represent although I don't know if I hardly ever go to those voting meetings but I'll do my best if I see <laughs> you need to vote on it's all eastern part of the state unfortunately all right first reading policies DJ DJA DJE I, um, basically there is a policy subcommittee meeting happening on Thursday going through the slew of changes from last year this, these are changes that came out. Some of it we talked about last year because that's to a procurement. But what I did, because it's basically the law, mm -hmm. and you can see it's straightforward, I just pushed it straight to school committee to vote, mm -hmm. put them in good place rather than go to the subcommittee mm -hmm. or whatever, because it is straightforward. Um, again, some were just language talking, but the biggest thing is procurement is changing from fifty dollars to $100,000 in the end bid, and that's significant for us. Okay. So read them between now and next meeting, and we will vote them the next meeting. Correct. So, excellent. Uh, FY25 capital projects. Haven't we picked everything yet? Is our stove up and running? Yes. Oh, good. It is. The new one is here. Oh, good. <laughs> they took the old one away. With none of the quirks of the old one, huh? That's good. And well, though we did, the Pat um, McCarthy, the food service director, said when the tech fired up the new one, it did the same flame thing out the front. So he had to actually make some adjustments on the um, stove to get it up and running properly, but no other problems. Good. He said, before you even take that off your truck, make sure it's the right hookup. Do not bring it in here. Yeah. I know. And that was yeah. To be so excited about something and then have it be yeah. such a pain is just uh, just a pain. Yeah. All right. So what do we got for capital projects? Um, I'm going to share with you. All right. So you know when I. So basically, um, you have the good news is you have no projects that are currently open. Uh, That's the only school that is. Everything else has been completed with that, but still getting replaced. Um, I apologize because you know what? I sent everybody else a PDF of this 
thing to go through so you have it. So I'll send it to you afterwards. Okay. Um, but we'll just what we'll talk about what we see up there. So these are the four things that um, Kristen met with Bill Hildreth and we created a list of um, projects that are coming down the pipe. Mm -hmm. um, again, this might be something where there may not be a lot of money this year, as we've already talked about. Um, but um, we'll kind of go through the upgrading the phone system. Um, our current phone system is not on. Um, it's not in the. It's not running off our server. That all the other schools are well. All the other schools are served. Sunderland, Sunderland, Deerfield, and they, you can't add more lines and you can't buy replacement phones without going on eBay. And so it's just one of those things where it's oh, it's, it's, it's about time to. Oh, well, it's um, a safety issue too. Mm -hmm. So right now, just to be clear, but right now I don't believe it's a safety issue. But as phones start to fail and that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. um, you know, I mean, if I thought it was a, if I thought it was a <coughs> communication safety issue, we would just go use choice money right okay. now and fix that. I just want to when we say that. But overall, you want to make sure that obviously our system is working mm -hmm. fine. Um, classroom floors, Chris. I'm going to ask you to jump in a little bit because since you talked about this on the yeah, so classroom floors, the two remaining are. Pre-K and K, they, they're next on the list. I think we'll be good with classroom floors. Um, and that, I'm just saying that's the removal of carpet and putting in. I'm sorry. Yeah. That's I, what I was asking. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Well, yeah. those guys are sitting on them all the time, too, right? Yeah. Yeah. So the idea is removing the, the yeah. car floor carpet and put them in there now. I guess there were rugs instead. So yeah, they yeah. can replace them every, every three, three or four years. And yeah. then that way they include more sanitary. Mm -hmm. um, and then three new AC mini splits. Okay, we this and this would complete the building. That's cool. All right, and again, that number there, the twenty-eight thousand, is um, nine thousand per unit. Right now, we got forty percent back. Yeah, that forty percent goes back to the town. So um, this is if we buy it here, did we get the forty percent back? Uh, so last time the town paid for it, and the town got the rebate. So we thought we would actually be done with this project. That was the original plan, but because of the way we talked about that before, mm -hmm. the way the accounting works, the mm -hmm. town got the rebate. Yep. Um, the Which problem. classroom is left, Kristen? So the art music room, which all the kids spend time in. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry, I should know this right off the top. Sixth is done, fifth is done, fourth is done, third is done. Well, yeah. That's on the front office, but for the reason the one. Oh, is it, is it the one the teachers meeting? Yes, yes, yes. You know, the one over there. That one over there. That's helpful. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And then, um, trying to find it. It's okay. I was just curious. I mean, there's one off. Kids, schools are closed in the first week of school for heat. So, mm -hmm. and you were. And our staff shape. uses them exactly how they should use them. They don't <laughs> overuse them, they don't underuse them. Yeah. yeah. Very thankful. Very yeah. thankful for the air conditioning. Um, and then down the stretch, it will be to get a BMS system that can run them all. Yeah. So we kind of, you know, and I'm having this conversation with other towns about how to do it. We got the comfort first without the, having the ability to manage it all from one central spot. So yeah. the next thing would be to tie them in. Um, if, you know, I mean, it gets about a thousand dollars a room to tie them in, but we also have to the, the system to tie them into, right? Them allow us to do all that. So that'll be something further down the line, but that would yeah. be so that I would I wouldn't say that AC mini splits is done until you tie them into a BMS system. Yeah. And then the final thing is the video surveillance system. And Kristen, you're gonna have to jump in a little bit on that. Yeah, we don't have any outside cameras, so our you know our playground has been um, vandalized. The preschool playground was vandalized pretty badly. Um, Seriously? What'd you say? This year? Uh, the preschool playground, it was in the spring. Um, the playground, you know, it's, it's so it's off the road. Right. And it's pretty dark around here, you know. Um, so our hope is to get some outside uh, cameras. Well, after all that investment in that playground. Yeah. Just, you know. it's, it's good now, but it's like um, the preschool was terrible. Someone tipped over like their little house oh and part God. of the broke and yeah um the the um basketball hoops are crooked uh looking at jared it, was, it wasn't jared he came I mean, I can't <laughs> the, um 
Front sidewalk and entry right way isn't green, but is very close to green because we have we have many little children and adults who stumble and fall out there. There's yeah. very well, we did the repair where we shaved it, but yeah. that's only going to last for yeah. so long. So that, yeah, looking into the following year. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's going to be the question is what can we, so, you know, we have our own reserve. Right. You know, but um, the town won't be putting money, I imagine, this year mm -hmm. back into it. Right. So I think we're just going to, you know, again, this is the beginning mm -hmm. of the conversation. Mm -hmm. Right. If we have to go to the town, we have to get on their capital committee, their capital list. Right. Um, Again, I think we gotta kind of have to be strategic about, you know, what we we probably want to do some projects, keep things moving forward. Definitely. We want to also be probably conservative this year. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I also think we can look at other funding sources. Again, mm -hmm. we're aid. We're going to have money this year, and that hopefully coming back next year. I don't think they're planning to take that away. Yeah. And then seeing what we have for ESSER. So uh, yeah. Conway has been the least reliant on ESSER for budget reasons, although we did use twenty thousand. Most of the other schools use much more. Yeah. So we do have some funds available, so we can talk about what makes most sense, like doing the AC, because we'll get the rebate. Rebate. Yeah. You know, does it make sense Before for us go to away. just pay that? Yeah. Right. So. Yeah. Correct. Makes sense. Any questions about this? All makes sense. And the new curtain looks good out there. It looks great. It's beautiful. Excellent. All righty. Um, Denise sent a collaborative report from since the last meeting, I think. So if people had a chance to review that. Um, and I think that's it. Or any other news? All right. Can I have a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion to adjourn. Michael? I'll second it. All right. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Thanks, everybody.